Thank you so much, uh, Chairman, uh, honorable members of the committee. Thank you all for this critically important hearing today, and shukran, which means thank you, Chairman Cummings, for always creating a space for us in this committee. Uh, from the first week, you said we give you new energy. I hope that's still the case, so thank you. By allowing us to testify before this committee and enter what we observed and experienced in our visit to El Paso border on July 1st to the CPP Station 1 and the Clint Camp and into the congressional record. I appreciate that responsibility and not picking on the president but holding this administration accountable. First, no one is illegal. That term is derogatory now because it dehumanizes people. You can say any other forms of maybe uh, coming in without regulations or, or so forth, but the use of illegal is disrespectful and I ask my colleagues to, to try in so many ways to not dehumanize our immigrant neighbors that are trying to come in for a safe haven. Mr. Speaker, while working at human service and community advocacy organizations, I learned early on that to truly bring power to the table to see what is at stake, you have to bring people in the room who can't be here. So I'm asking for Jacqueline, who age, was age seven, from Guatemala, who died from sepsis while in our care. She was the same age as my son when I heard about it. Mr. Speaker, we do have a crisis at our border. It is one of morality. As we have seen this current strategy unfold, intentional and cruelly created by the Trump administration, dead set on sending a hate-filled message that those seeking refuge are not welcome in America, in our America, and that the rule of law, human rights, will not, be, will not protect them here. Instead, Mr. S Chairman, it's a dangerous ideology that rules our nation right now. I've been so deeply haunted by the un unforgettable, unforgettable image of a four-year-old boy coming up to me through a glass door of a cell he was in with a number of other children, asked me in Spanish where his papa was, and slid a very small board to me so I could write something on it. It was like a dry board. I'm not sure what he needed before an agent asked me to stop engaging him. Chairman, again, bringing those who can't be here into this room, I asked my colleagues to see a drawing from one of the children in the cages, in the cells, up there, and I want you to not look away. I ask you and beg you not to look away. But the suffering in these illegal and immoral camps isn't just limited to those children. Something I learned, Mr. Chairman, is that I was able to travel to Clint, Texas and meet face-to-face -face mother, face -face mothers, fathers, grandparents who are suffering, ripped away from their families, not knowing if they ever see their children and loved ones again. I won't forget the father from Brazil who held on to his son with tears in his eyes as he told me in English, he just wants his son to be an American boy. He said his wife, he was with his wife, his eight-year-old daughter and teenage boy, in a tent-like space outside of Station 1. He said he has been there for four days. I won't forget Daisy, the grandmother who had a red ribbon on her wrist with the name of the medication she needs, who said she had been in detention for 40 days, and she hadn't seen her grandson who was mentally impaired since being separated from him when they arrived. I wonder every day where she is now and whether or not she's hungry. The fear in their eyes won't be forgotten, Mr. Speaker, but the suffering in these illegal camps cannot be forgotten. Imagine traveling thousands of miles in grueling and dangerous conditions because you have no other option only to be separated from your family, from your children, thrown into overcrowded cages, denied a shower, toothbrush, and yes, Mr. Chairman, drink water out of the toilet if you're thirsty. Now imagine doing that while pregnant. In Clint, I met Betty's a woman pregnant with her first child. She smiled at me, and I instantly connected with her. She had a pink hoodie on, and I instantly just went towards her, even though they told us not to talk to anybody, Mr. Chairman, I couldn't not go to somebody that's smiling at me. And I said, hello, and she said, hello in English. And um, I love that she felt confident to speak to me in the broken English, and she said, 
She found out, she, I said, how long have you been here? She said, 27 days. And she said, I'm with a child. And she glowed. She was so happy because she had not known she was pregnant until she came here. But by showing up, Mr. Chairman, she is free now. The following day, she is free now. And we are following the asylum process. And she is now at home. I spoke to her last week. She's so happy. She said, you will be part of my family forever. Mr. Chairman, it needs to be noted into record. I spoke to CPB agents, even though they told us not to speak to them too. Remember that? And I said, what do you think we need to do because you guys are overwhelmed? They said, one of them, stop sending money. It's not working. Another one said, I wasn't trained for this. I am not a social worker. I am a medical, not a medical care worker. He actually said, I want to be at the border. That's what I was trained to be at. The, separate, the one other one, the last one, Mr. Chairman, the separation policy isn't working, he said. He knew about the separation policy that he was enacting. CPP morale is one of the lowest among law enforcement agencies, Mr. Chairman, since between 2017 and 2018, we had a high of 100 agents committing suicide. That needs to be put in record. The dehumanization is not only with those families, but it's also with the agents that we've had told to do this to these families. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much.